Art has no borders. Art is the medium of transformation. And public art is a collective medium of transformation. When I took the job as the director of the uh, public art for KRTC, Kaohsiung Rapid Transit Corporation, we have to decide who the artists will be, what kind of materials to use. We need an artist who can give the city almost a signature, an identity of what this industrial city, Port of Kaohsiung, what it's about. And I'm looking through all the artists and I find uh, Narcissus uh, is the artist that I've been looking for. The goal of this work is to make people feel how mysterious life is. So as an artist, how do I do that? I did what I loved to do. That's all. I managed to, to make what I love and what I am and what I do come together into one activity. Rome is where I was born. In Rome, I have all my childhood memories and the memories of a young man. I have always loved Rome because it is perhaps one of the few places on earth where you can sense and you can feel time. Time in Rome is something entirely different than anywhere else. This building, the Pantheon, has been used continuously for almost 2,000 years. And you can feel it. This is my home here on the Mediterranean coast. I share this home with my brother. This is the beach where the ancestors of the Romans came ashore. When I was 19, I left Italy and went to California. And then, when I was in California, I made a whole new life. I found another way to be, in a new and different world, focused on the future, experimentation, the new. And then, 30 years later, I moved on again, south, to come here, to Mexico, where I wound up on this mountain, a very special place. This house I built not just to live in, but to fly. My studio, my view, everything here is designed to propel me into flying with my spirit, with my mind. The energy that sustains me here is the perception of the very force that runs through nature and propels it from inside. Nature is a complex equilibrium of conflicting elements. The wetness, the dryness, the fire, the wind. Yet it is the imbalance of nature that gives it its dynamics. What this environment is to me is like wind to a sail. Here, this has been my wind to create the dome. I personally enjoy very much the port city of Kaohsiung. By now I feel at home here. I love the subtropical atmosphere. I love the combination of starkly modern and also very traditional with the small streets, 
the port. Light is understood in a very different way in Taiwan. When night comes, it's a carnival of light, and everything is backlit, intense, alive. What I'm doing is art, which is backlit as well, and I think that totally fits into the culture. I couldn't have done this project unless I felt a personal connection and surrendered something of me to this island, to this culture. The title of this work is Wind, Fire and Time. Wind is because this work is always moving. It's like a wheel that turns. Fire, because it's energy. The wind and the fire are the main energies in this piece. And time, because the frame is the structure of a clock inside of which opera of existence is happening. Out of the center emerge two glass columns, yin and yang, two opposing elements that form life, and then they spin a floating spiral over our head. 680 square meters of art in glass. A project of this size is a monumental project for everybody involved. Hundreds of people have made their contribution and are making their contribution. The work here that I do, the work that I do in Mexico City at the fusing factory, and then all of the infrastructure of the German studio just to produce the panels. Derek Studios is one of the few places in the world that could do this dome. This studio is at the vanguard of glass technology. We are on the market since 1866. I am the fourth generation. We are working at the moment uh, 65 pretty well trained people and I try really to push them very hard towards uh, doing always art. This invention could not happen without a group of artisans that are extremely sensitive and understand what needs to be done. That kind of scared me at the beginning that I could not read his mind. But now we have that. And that technically is breaking the borders pretty much. <laughs> Just everything is different, <laughs> new. Uh, it is not easy if you are dealing with about more than 500 square meters. But here we have a painting that has to be transferred into glass. Nowhere done up to now in the whole world. It uh, means that you have to set up a system uh, what uh, controls the process of the fabrication. This dome contains uh, 16 areas like that. Each area has 72 single panels. And so we have to restore all these panels and we have to find it whenever we need. Completely there are 1,132 panels and the whole diameter of the dome are 30 meters or 30 meters. So it's a huge project and needs a special uh, organization. Part of the work is done by spraying color on clear glass. After we work in the spray booth, that work is dried and then brought into a kiln to be fired. 
It's like uh, baking. <laughs> but part of the work is using already beautifully done pre-blown glass, which we cut into very specific shapes, and then these shapes form the image. The heart of my work is born in the fire, in the primordial heat. All images flow out of that fire. This is the way the glass was originally made in the Middle Ages. The colors come in the way of many different minerals that when mixed in the heat, form the glass. Together with the people in the factory, we decided how this glass was going to be done what colors were going to be used, and what techniques in giving form to these sheets. We shaped them as if they were watercolors made with fire. But what's behind the panels? The lighting, the air circulation, the fire protection, all of these things. And then the human work. This project is a true challenge and a great risk for all involved. In a work that so universally uses glass, I had to have Murano glass. When one says Murano, one thinks of glass. So, I had to find a way to include the fine work done in Murano into the more universal uh, scheme of my piece. The glass blowers in Murano are the inheritors of hundreds and hundreds of years of experience. Working with glass is working next to a volcano, and that is terribly taxing. Uh, you are always invested by so much heat, and uh, even if you approach the object that you're blowing, it radiates a tremendous amount of heat. That is very exhausting, but when the work is done, it's a wonderful, sweet fatigue. I have tried to represent the major states of mind of the human condition in individual figures, so that when we look at the dome, we look at the larger cosmic forces, but we also look at ourselves at what we feel as living beings. I place the lovers at the bottom of the sea, surrounded with algae. All of the world of love, sex, desire, relationship, is an element I wanted to bring into this universe. Love is, in my opinion, related to the sea. The dome has dimensions within dimensions, worlds set into the larger context. I visualize dream to be a young woman dreaming of herself inside an egg, and then again dreaming of herself inside an egg and on and on and on. I place this woman almost as if in a womb, inside the sea. Dream has the quality of floating. Dream and floating are connected. The fish are like a part of our soul. I don't want the dome to be two-dimensional. I want it to feel three-dimensional. By placing some fish very far away and some fish very close, it allows me 
to create a big space of water. Life itself is a large empty space made out of stars that take on the shape of a falling man. Out of his chest a tree grows. It shows us all the diverse beauty of nature. I tried to capture the variety, the joy of the shapes of life itself. I want this dome to make people feel where we humans are in the larger cosmos, to look up and outward and feel the space between the stars, between the galaxies. I depicted creation itself as a figure that is defined by emptiness, with at its heart the sun, a star, the engine of our life. Life happens at many levels, at multiple scales. Our galaxy, which is enormous, in reality is a dot in an immense canvas. All these levels I want to be able to suggest in this work. The figure of creation has galaxies inside a hand. The suggestion of the beginning of time. This is my homage to Michelangelo. Yin, femininity itself, made out of stars, with her head in the light, pregnant with the moon, floating in the sea. What is often not mentioned is that there is a real price in taking on a project of this dimension. The price is that behind my back, inside myself, I feel a loneliness, a melancholy, that is absolutely incurable. And sometimes, it really hurts. The figure of pain is a monster. It's an alien inside of us. Pain, per se, is almost like the distortion of being human. This is about life in its totality. And life cannot exist without some reminder of death. Weaving in the imagery of the end of life and suffering and the darker side The figure of grief is the embodiment of the inevitable result of conflict, unavoidable for us humans. I decided to portray this figure as a shrouded woman turned inside herself. In the universe, like in the human realm, conflict defines growth. Destruction and creation are tied the archetype of conflict I presented as two wrestlers made out of stars clashing, bursting into flames, and out of these flames comes the phoenix, a new life, the beginning, the end, the end, the beginning. This mythical bird is going forward in time with hope and beauty. Hope 
I represent it as a simple figure. It's an African man tending a fire. It is my sense that the simplest act represents the best in us. The birth of intelligence I represent it in a strange way. You have to struggle to see it. It's the image of a man seated on a rock floating in space. In the brain there is a triangular prismatic form which is not natural. Out of the cosmic organic soup of matter comes thought represented by one prism the first abstraction. To understand life, I think you have to understand silence. So I dedicated one figure to meditation. Stillness. Quiet. The human attempt to stop time and in one breath grasp the sense of existence. I want an artist who can give uh, people the joy of life, to see what life is about, and inside questions from inside of the viewer. When they see the artwork, they will be able to feel, wow, this is life. What is the question? What is life? What is beauty? Inspire the viewer to ask questions, but do not give answers. Dance is the way to celebrate balance, magic, movement, creation in the human realm with grace. And dance is a way to evoke and dive into the river of this never-ending transformation. Mm -hmm.